Hello guys, I am Marco Zacchini and today we are going to um, see uh, what uh, low power long range connectivity is and um, we're gonna at the beginning we're gonna see um, how this is how this this work and uh, and what when and why uh, it, it is used and uh, later on we will see in other videos uh, some tutorials uh, related to this technology and how to connect it especially with the uh, IoT lab so let's start um, uh, it was envisioned that by 2020, uh, 25 billion devices will be connected to the to the network. I don't know if this provision is correct, but anyway, uh, the number of um, connected devices, sensors, and so on is increase is increasing day by day, and um, we have several um, communication protocols uh, and networks that. Um, are employed that we have seen and that are very well known uh, which are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi but uh, anyway uh, as well as 3G and 4G these are not well suited for um, IoT scenarios because they are most of them high uh, power and they use a lot of battery and uh, yeah they have a high throughput and um, and for example, in the case of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you need to be close to the, to the antenna. Uh, while in the other case, it, 3G and 4G are technologies that cost a lot. And so, um, these are um, technologies that maybe are not well suited for, for IoT technologies. Um, also because we don't care about having a high throughput or uh, to admit a, a lot of data, we just interested in sending uh, sensor data um, using less power, less battery as possible, and um, uh, when it's possible, do it for free. So um, these are not the best solution. That's why uh, some new protocols were introduced, like um, a new new topology of networks, like LPVAN, which stands for Low Power Wide, Low Power Wide Area Network, where um, um, these are the challenges that it aims to solve, which are mostly related with um, the bandwidth and the data rate, because here we have a trade-off among uh, the communication range and the duration uh, of, of a message and, and we don't want that the data rate it's very high we, we, we don't care about it we just want that uh, our our message is sent uh, but in this way we will have um, we want to face uh, the, the challenge related with, to the battery so we want to maximize the, the, the life of our final device of our device we want to uh, transmit messages for um, as faster as, as farther as we can because um, for example we, we can have some we want to use the less number of antennas uh, possible for example to cover the, the, the entire an entire city for, for receiving messages uh, from sensors. And we, we, we don't have uh, the interest, as I said, in big data rates and so in, out in a high throughput of our, our messages. So uh, we, we are, we are, these new protocols that we are, we are seeing it can be placed in this tabella where we have uh, the, the distance on the uh, here and the bandwidth here on this place because as, uh, what, what we, are, we are interesting in is uh, sending uh, messages as far as we can and we are not interested in sending a lot of data so we want to use a little amount of bandwidth because we, we are not interested in using a lot of it uh, well for example these other technologies that uh, that we have discussed before for example, Bluetooth and this is a Wi-Fi wireless um, can be used uh, just in a short range, but for, for, with a high bandwidth. 
as well as 5G, 4G, and Zigbee can, even if it's a Bluetooth, Bluetooth uh, protocol, it can reach uh, farther um, ranges because of mesh networks and, and this stuff. So uh, here is where we are placing our LP1 uh, uh, protocols and there are some implementations and now we, we, we're going to see which are and doing this lesson. So once again, this is another slide um, summarizing this concept. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a very low power consumption. We, uh, we have high latency, but we can achieve and we can cover, as I said before, with less antennas, we can cover um, a, a, big, a, a big side, a big part of the city or of whatever of field or um, so our, our messages can be transmitted um, further okay but as I said the bandwidth are these and for example the bandwidth uh, the bandwidth again and yeah the latency um, so we were maybe costume we, we were yeah costume to see um, networks that are they were more um, related to these two columns which are for example home networks where i collect information from our um, uh, from sensors around my my place my my home and then my my my, my through my wi-fi and my, my uh, network to, to, through yeah to wi-fi i will send it i will forward this information to an application and uh, that, that stuff as well as for mesh network as i said as i said before i um, talk about zigbee that uh, is a bluetooth protocol um, more or less and uh, it has the opportunity to uh, create mesh network where uh, devices can be used as relays to forward uh, other mm, mm, uh, the, the messages arriving from other sensors as you can see from the picture so now we are designing a star network where we have um, that our sensor directly communicates with um, with some um, gateways or and uh, and these gateways forward the, the messages the information received from the sensor to a central application where these are processed okay so we, we are changing our point of view. So um, um, these are the uh, characteristics uh, targeted with the LP1 technologies. So we have a long range um, communication protocol that can achieve from five to 40 kilometers in open fields that does not use a lot of battery. And so, so our battery uh, can last for some case also 10 years, uh, we will send just few bytes per second and because we, we don't need to send a lot of information. And uh, it's a very cheap solution because uh, both the cheap and the subscription to a, to a radio cost doesn't cost that much. And uh, it is very use, very, very good for covering uh, the 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 yeah the, the the remote and rural areas as well as for example also I think in the, that in the city yeah it requires much more uh, antennas but it can be a good solution because you can reach for example uh, yeah a range of from two to five kilometers away from the from the from the antenna so um, it's a good solution also for 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 city, I, I, I see. So uh, we, once again, we were accustomed to see a, a solution that uh, where our sensor transmitted their data to our home gateway that is wired to the network and that transmits forward this data to the internet and arrive to a cloud application, okay? Uh, so in this case, uh, mm, mm, we are we are we are working, for example, as I said, for with Zigbee or with uh, short anyway with short range right radio devices. 
um, so uh, while with uh, with LP1 connectivity we can uh, allow direct access to devices that are for example in the fields and that transmit their data to a base station that serves uh, that receive information from from a lot a lot a lot of sensors reducing a lot the costs of this overall application okay uh, so as I said, we are transmitting our data to this uh, central gateway, to the, not central, but to this gateway that is wired to the network and, for example, through MQTT can transmit this information to a cloud server, okay, or through co-op, okay. And um, this is a first, for example, a first example of, 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 of connectivity, but we can also have this other network topology where we have uh, several uh, sensors that are connected through a short-range local connectivity uh, facility to uh, a gateway that instead communicates uh, to uh, another get communicate with another gateway uh, through this LP1 connectivity. And once again, it is uh, it is uh, it is connected to the uh, to the to the network and it transmits its information to the to the cloud and so to the applications um so yeah we have discussed a lot of about help one pro help uh, one itself but it is um, there are several several lp1 providers and um, these are, are the most uh, well known and uh, for example, I, I've always I always work with LoRa, and uh, but anyway, I know that Sigfox, it's very very well, you know, so very uh, a lot of people use it as well as in Gnu, but I think more in in, in the US. And uh, um, we're gonna see more how LoRa works, and um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we are going to see how, how Sigfox work um, more, more because I, I don't know um, a lot about um, a lot about it and uh, I don't see it makes that much sense to, to discuss it and uh, so uh, let's see how uh, um, yeah first these are a uh, slide comparing the different um, 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 results that can achieve uh, each um, different uh, um, LP1 provider and <clears throat> as you can see LoRa seems to be the faster and they can reach uh, no, Sigfox, Sigfox seems to be a very good solution for um, con concerning the range and but anyway with Ingenuine and Waveyacht you can Build a very big uh, network with uh, less, um, uh, with a lot of connected devices. Okay. Yeah, let's jump and let's discuss about LoRa. LoRa uh, is a um, is a technology and a protocol engineered by Semtech, which is our French uh, uh, company, I guess. And it has a big alliance working um, that that uh, where um, several um, industries, uh, several yeah industries work together, uh, and there are a, a, a lot of members, and they have created two versions of protocol, LoRaMac and uh, LoRaVan. They define three class of devices. And we are going to we're going to see how uh, these three devices. Uh, LoRa one, so LoRa wide area network work, and they are classified as A, B, and C. And they can be, yeah, you can the the, the chip setup exist in unidirectional and bidirectional, in the binary directional way. And f f up to now, they are uh, the only provider is Semtech. So mm. you all, all, if you have a port with. LoRa, it will have probably an antenna produced by Semtech. 
Hit uh, Thora allows us to implement those kinds of um, application we, we 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 saw before. These are start start technologies uh, where we have um, yeah our sensors that transmit through um, LoRa to the LoRa physical uh, physical layer. Um, so through waves and uh, messages. <coughs> Uh, some messages to a uh, network operator that then forward this uh, this information encrypted, and then we will see how um, through a cloud cloud API, and uh, we can also build uh, we can use a a, a, a public low low one network operator, or we can also build our own private network with low one, and now in the the next tutorial we're gonna see how to build a we are gonna use a LoRaWAN network operator. Anyway, we can also um, include our LoRaWAN server that was here before, and that was included here in the this private network and uh, here in the public network that we are gonna use later. We can include this LoRaWAN server also in our gateway and transmit it directly, like like creating another private network, but which is smaller than this one. Okay. And then we can use here different, uh, yeah, protocols for transmitting our data instead here we can't. This is a long range start network, as I claimed several times, and where we have all our sensors connected to gateways through LoRa, and these most of the times are are wired to the network uh, through 3G, Ethernet, or I don't know, and then that transmit their information to a network server that can be private, public, or included in our gateway, as, as we said before. And then these are transmitted to our, uh, securely, this can be transmitted to our application server. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, yeah, mm, okay. This is our application. The data rate is very low, uh, as we say, saw before. And we have our information encrypted with AES 128. And uh, so we will have, as you can imagine, symmetric keys uh, for encrypting our data. And then we will see where we will place these um, mm -hmm. uh, symmetric keys in order to encrypt our data. Uh, yeah, it's, it says that is a stars of stars architecture because you can see a star on with this gateway as a center and a, st a star so a star of star application uh, network excuse me so because these are more, several gateways communicating with the server and we have uh, three class of beacon that we are going to explore uh, now <laughs> And uh, we, the first, yeah, the first uh, class is the, I think that it's the most used. And, and there are many, many, many devices uh, connected with this class. And then there are, the, there are two, these two classes. Uh, yeah, class A devices um, are devices that sleep, so they save energy most of the time, but once sometimes they wakes up wakes up and they uh, transmit their data uh, through yeah through LoRa and then they expect a little delay where there are two windows where they can receive information so uh, from the gateways so as you can imagine when 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 you want to uh, to to transmit the information from the gateway to the um, to the to a class A device, you need to wait that he transmits first some something, okay? So you queue your inf your messages, and we will do it later, in order to um, from the gateways in order to transmit them uh, when the when the, the 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 class A protocol uh, transmit something, okay? Then there are the class B. Um, uh, devices where essentially what uh, it's different for them is the fact that 
they are synchronized to the gateway. So there are some, uh, they, 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 does, they do some pings with, uh, with, uh, with the gateway in order to synchronize them among them, okay? But essentially, uh, this is the main, task that this class B uh, devices do and I don't think that they are very very that they, they are not uh, so used um, finally there are the continuous receiving uh, windows of class C so they are these are product these are devices a class of devices that um, listen a lot of time okay they wait for messages for a lot of time. So maybe they are connected, they, they are powered, because as you can imagine, using the, the first the first class, the class A, um, since you sleep most of the, of your time, uh, you don't use a lot of battery. So your battery will, will last much, much more than class C. But maybe sometimes these class C devices are devices that are directly powered from, from the grid network. So uh, they don't need to say, uh, maybe yes, they are just powered, but they are not. Uh, they are not wired uh, to to the network, or can, they cannot have. A, yeah, they don't want. To, don't need to send a lot of information, so uh, they don't want to use a five G or four G protocol in order to transmit information. Okay, so uh, in this way, in this case, we don't want to 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 waste time sleeping because we are directly wired powered by the network okay in the class c protocol because as i said we listen we are awake and for most of the time yeah this uh, summarize what I, i've just said and these are the um, so a protocols are those um, devices that are those sensors that are battery powered um, as you can see, the B devices protocol, uh, B devices um, don't use a lot of battery, but they don't even um, save a lot of battery any, anyway. So I don't. That's why I think that they are not so used. They just you just in, in just in particular opportunity you you will use it. And so finally, there are the C class. Um, uh, devices and uh, yeah they use a lot of battery but they are uh, immediate they offer immediate access for downlink communication here is how how our info data information are encrypted so as i said there, there were two uh, keys because uh, there are some symmetric keys that were in, employed in this uh, in this network and because information are um, encrypted with a AES and uh, yeah there are two keys and the first key is a network session key which is a key uh, that is um, built uh, that is shared among the end devices and the network server so we will transmit our information to the gateway that will send it to uh, through IP uh, protocols to um, a network server that can decrypt this information and forward this, in, this the information to our application, which has another key shared with the, with the data. Okay, so uh, our um, information, our payload, our message is double encrypted. Okay, see so it's encrypted the first time, and then another time with um, with the application. Okay. And this is how a packet uh, is built, more or less. So, um, yeah, among our network server and our... Uh, this is this slide essentially tells you that uh, the gateway just forward these information and it's uh, just uh, the network session key. And since it's shared among these two, um, Mm, they will. They are the only that can be that can that can decrypt uh, this message and uh, as well as for application key. Okay. Okay. But now mm, let's dive a little bit more on lower one protocols and LP one protocols in general. But uh, 
let's stay focused on lower on, in, in, the, on the lower on ingredients okay how can we achieve these performances okay and um, essentially we will achieve this with uh, yeah with a, with a very little bandwidth and uh, so we will see the fre frequency that allow us to transmit this information and um, that, that yeah to, to to communicate through LoRa um, to through LoRa how our information our waves that transmit our information are modulated because it's not so conventional i guess and essentially we will see how being farther from um uh, from a gateway we will set our um, spreading factor uh, in different ways for and we will achieve um, we will yeah achieve different uh, data rates okay so talking about waves uh, waves uh, needs these are these are waves that um, is a signal okay but a signal like this doesn't mean anything okay in order to uh, transmit information we need to modulate this signal okay and the two uh, most used modulation are based on amplitude and frequency okay in, in the amplitude modulation we um, increasing our signal okay signal waves or decreasing it we will transmit different information on the other hand with frequency modulation we will achieve this different um, we will transmit different information according to the frequency of the signal okay now, uh, what happens in in LoRa? It's a bit different, okay. But first, we need to introduce some some concepts, and this one are chirps, are the chirps, and the bandwidth and the um, and the sweep rate or spreading factor, okay. Okay, as you can see here from the from the from the image, um, the bandwidth uh, for LoRa. Um, Networks are very very little, so um, since bandwidth means it's it's related to to the rate of our of our transmission of information, so to our data rate, uh, increasing the battery we will have a better quality and we will have um, we can send more information. Okay. Uh, anyway, our bandwidth it's cut, and we have also sweep rate. Oh, first we have chips where chips are um, signals where the frequency changes linearly uh, according to the time so as you can see here from the images you start uh, with a certain frequency and this frequency increase faster so yeah once again here uh, you can see how how our uh, signal increases linearly to the time uh, with respect to the time okay and these are chirp signals and uh, finally we have sweep rates where sweep rates it's synonym for a spreading factor which is the duration of a chirp okay here we can you can see different uh, spreading factors uh, for uh, the same chip because it has the same uh, yeah it has the same bandwidth okay so uh, these are the main concept regarding to yeah modulation techniques um, behind LoRa because how LoRa does use it okay um, we uh, we modulate our signal in this way we split our um, our um, our frequency okay which is very little as I said with our bandwidth okay we split it into um, two to the power of sf steps or chips these are called also chips so for example if we choose uh, a spreading factor of seven okay we will have 128 different chips so different um, um, interval in the bandwidth okay so uh, starting from em em emitting the signal from here we transmit zero starting from here we will transmit 64 starting from here 
we will transmit 32. So at equal mirror, we will transmit 95. Okay, so this chip is carrying an information, which is 95. So if we want to encode these seven bits here, okay, and we could be representing the decibel value 95, we will start from the 95th interval of our bandwidth, okay, where we have that that we, we have used for dividing our bandwidth, okay? And starting from up when, when the period starts again, we start emitting the signal starting from the fifth, uh, 95th uh, um, interval of our um, chip, okay? Um, I've linked you uh, if you are interested in on how, and we will see it now, uh, um, how data rate is computed in LoRaWAN. There is this video by this guy, uh, Mobile Fish, uh, which helps us a lot in computing this information about the data rate. I will increase it. Okay, we have that bandwidth can be interchangeably um, used with uh, we can use chip rate instead of bandwidth, okay? So if we have a bandwidth of uh, 125 kilohertz, we will transmit uh, 125,000 chips per second, okay? And the symbol rate, so how many symbols we send for us in each second, is computing as follow. So bandwidth over uh, 2 to the power of spreading factor, which in our case was seven, okay? So if we are, um, we want to uh, compute the symbol rate for a bandwidth of 20, 125 kilohertz with a spreading factor of seven, we have to use this formula and we will see that we will transmit 90, uh, 977 symbols per second, okay? Um, another thing is the chip duration, okay, that, that it's computed as follow. We will have that um, our period, okay, um, that you can imagine, uh, yeah, that were that yellow lines on our, these are our periods, okay. Among these two, there is a period, and uh, um, it's computed. No, it's not. Ah, it's here. This is our period, okay, according to how to our bandwidth. So we have periods of eight microseconds with a bandwidth of uh, one hundred twenty-five kilohertz, and um, we will transmit. Uh, we will so our symbol duration will be um, as follow. Okay, we will transmit um, two to the power of uh, of spreading factor. Um, <coughs> we, in a, we will transmit in, in an interval it, which is two to the power of spreading factor uh, over bandwidth. Okay, so if we want to. Um, transmit with a spreading factor of 7 and bandwidth of, with this bandwidth, okay, we will have this uh, symbol duration, which as you can see, with the, um, if we increase the bandwidth, it will decrease the symbol duration. On the other hand, if we increase the spreading factor, we will um, increase our symbol duration. So to transmit some information, for example, 10, t, uh, t, uh, 10 bytes with this uh, bandwidth in with a spreading factor of uh, s uh, of uh, of 7 we will uh, it will takes 41 microseconds while in a, with a spreading factor of 12 it will takes 991 microseconds okay and see this parameter is known as time on air for um, transmitting this information. But anyway, if you want more information related to data rates, you can um, see the video that it's very, very clear. But why do we need different spreading factors? 
because spreading factors okay let's do this metaphor imagine that you are uh, at the party you want to speak with someone okay and if you are close enough you um, just need you you can speak you don't need to speak very loud okay but imagine that you are uh, um, very far from this guy okay or you are at the party so there is a lot of of, of of noise around you and you want to communicate either you speak very loud okay and you, you, you use a lot of energy or you speak very slow okay so when you are when your device is very close to the antenna or to the to the gateway you need to be you can use also a, a spreading factor of seven which takes um, less time and transmit more information okay um, and transmit less information but it requires less time okay but if you are fast if you are farther okay very far and you want to speak with the antenna you need to speak slow so you need to take your time and transmit big words um, for, for communicating with, 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 the, with the gateway and these changing these part these brain factors you will be able to communicate in this way according to the to the distance of, of your devices from from your gateway okay this is uh, a table just summarize what we have just see uh, just said and uh, with a spreading factor of seven we will have to do the power of seven symbols so 128 and we will have a very high bit rate okay because we are, we are close away and we communicate quite normally okay so we transmit um in, in a sh we, we can communicate in a short time okay on the other hand increasing the spread factor we will you, you will transmit bigger words like bigger sentences or bigger messages no excuse me not because uh, messages you will be able of um, be more precise while you are using your bandwidth okay using because you have you have divided your interval in uh, in smaller interval but uh, it takes much more time to communicate and you have a very low bit rate but in this way you are able to communicate if you are far <coughs> now uh, let's see what the things network is because is the is the, the network server that we are going to uh, we are going to use um, so as i said the network server is that entity that it's here so uh, you will have these are your sensor that communicate through to be the gateway that sends your information to a network server and this the things network is a um, this kind of network operator LoRaWAN network operator and um, is a very um, it's a community of people that uh, it's based on the idea yeah that uh, people can share their gateways that are linked to, to the thing network some somehow and uh, they can they they are in in a, they are placed some in a, in a way that they can cover as much as um, as land as possible okay um and you can use the gateway of a, of a of someone you don't know for for sending messages to the things network okay for your application so even if you don't have a, a gateway you can use someone else one so this is where how our um the things network will be um in our in our in our architecture in order and it's it will allow us to collect information from uh, the gateway that out was made from the sensor now uh, in the next videos we're going to see we, we're going to see how um implement this in iot lab where they have um, devices with lower antennas that can communicate with some gateways that is installed uh, within their lab so and we will link this this gateway is linked to the thing network and in this way we'll communicate with the things network so uh, see you in the next videos